Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be creating the pricing and floor plan section within the property detail screen. It's going to look like this. So let's get started in building it out. First, let's create a new component within our property details section folder called pricing and floor plan section. And let's just export a new component called pricing and floor plan section. And it's going to be taking in a one prop, which is going to be a property. So we'll call it that property, which is the type of property, which comes from our types. All right, now let's navigate to our property details screen and add in the pricing and floor plan section so that we can actually see what we're working on while we do the coding and we'll pass in the property here which will just be the item and it's going to say that we don't have anything returning from here so let's just add a return statement of empty brackets currently and let's start to build this thing out so for the imports we need to import use state and use effect from react text and divider from UI kitten style sheet image view and touchable opacity from react native and theme and row from our local components down below here i'm just going to create my styles here up top let's add a text component we're going to have the category equal to h5 and give it a style of default margin vertical which we'll create and the text is going to read pricing and floor plans. So default margin vertical is just going to have a margin vertical of 10. And now it's rendering the pricing and floor plans. So within this component, we have to remember that we want to show the different types of apartments that are available within the property. So we need to go to our properties in the data and actually add in some apartments to this. So I'm here I'm just going to create a new field called apartments and I'm going to assign it to an array of apartment objects. And if you just like to copy and paste this, just go to the GitHub link in the description and it will be in the data file. So right here and then look for properties. So I'm going to add in these apartments into every other one. All right, so with that done, I actually didn't need to add the apartments to all of them because it's not required but I did add them to a majority of Miami properties and some Colorado properties so I'm going to go back to the pricing and floor plan section and create a new state variable that state variable is going to be called current apartments and we are going to assign it to property dot apartments and beneath of that we will have a use effect hook and within that we will say that if the property dot apartments is not equal to our current apartments we'll just set the current apartments to the property apartments and that is going to change whenever the property changes so next we'd like to create this little tab bar here which will filter for the one bed two bed and three plus bed apartments to get started with that, we'll create a new variable called floor plan options, which will house a bunch of different objects, which all have a title and on press event. For the first one, the title will be all, and we will just set the current apartments to property.apartments whenever it's pressed. For studio, we will create a new 
function which filters out the apartments so that only studios are shown and we'll label it with studio one bedroom is kind of the same thing we just need to pass in one and equals to our filter by bedroom the next object will be a two bedroom and then the last one will be three plus bedrooms and now we just need to create this filter by bedroom function so above our floor plan options here we'll create that filter by bedroom function it will take in a number of bedrooms which will be a number and an equality type which will either be greater than gt or equal eq and if the property does have apartments then we'll create a new variable called filtered and if the equality type is equal to eq then we'd like to filter out our apartments so that the number of bedrooms is equal to the passed in number of bedrooms otherwise we would just like to get the number of bedrooms as greater than the passed in number of bedrooms and then here at the end we'll just set the current apartments to our filtered variable now we'd like to create a new component which looks like this so go into your components here and create a new file called tabbar.tsx up top we'll import touch flow opacity style sheet and view style from react native text from ui kitten and use state from react then we'll import theme and row and then we need to export our component here which is tab bar it's going to, it's going to take in tabs and style tabs is not optional it's going to be an object which has a title which is a string and an on press event which is a function that can really be any and then an optional style prop which will either be view style or a view style array and within this we need to create a new state variable called active index to represent the active index now beneath of this we'll return a row component passing in our passed in style here and then we will map through our tabs and for each of them we'll return a touchable opacity and whenever that touchable opacity is pressed we need to create a handle press function and pass in the index and also pass in the function that needs to run whenever this is pressed now for the style we'll pass in an array and we'll give it a style of margin right which we will create in a bit and next we'll pass in an object which has a border top color property that's dependent on whether or not this items index is equal to the active index if that's the case then it will be color dash primary dash 500 otherwise it will be an empty string border top width will be the same thing just uh, if it is equal to the active index it will be three otherwise zero and then padding top it will be zero otherwise it will be three and then for the key it will be the title of the item and within this we'd like to render out some text we'll give it a category of c2 the appearance will depend on if the active index is equal to the items index and if that's the case then it will be default otherwise it will be hint and the text that we'd like to render is the title of the item so for the handle press function it's going to take in an index and a function reference we will just call set active index to the passed in index and then call the function that's getting passed in and down below here for the styles we'll just have margin right be a margin right of 15. now back here in pricing and floor plan underneath our text here let's render out a tab bar passing in our floor plan options and giving it a style of styles default margin vertical and let's import tab bar so that's not going to be there and remember to import the local component instead of ui kittens component so tab bar okay so that's rendering out all right so now if the property does have apartments and the length of the array of the apartments is greater than zero then we want to map through all of those apartments and return a view which will have the style of styles.container and default margin vertical the key will be equal to the id of the apartment 
And down here, the style of container is padding of 10, width of 100, 100%. Border color is going to be our color dash gray. Border width will be 1, and border radius will be 5. Now within this view, we'd like to render out a row. And then within that, we'll have a view which has the style of styles.apartment logistics container. And this is the style for that. It'll have a flex shrink of 1, width of 90%. Padding right of 10 and a margin top of negative 5. And then within that view, we will render out some text which has a style of apartment logistics title. And for the text, if the bedrooms is equal to 0, then we'll render that it's a studio. Otherwise, we will just render out the number of bedrooms plus bed at the end. And then we'd like to add a space here and render the number of bathrooms followed by the word bath. And the styles for this are a font size of 15 and a font weight of 600. And underneath of that, we'll render out some more text, which is just going to be the cost to rent the place. We'll give it a style of apartment logistics margin and give it a category of C1. And that margin is going to just be a margin top of one. And beneath that, we'll render out some more text with a category of C1. So if the apartment is a studio, we'll render that it's a studio. Otherwise, we'll render out the number of bedrooms, like above here. And then at the end, we'll just render out the square feet of the apartment. Let's save that and see how it looks. Looks good. And if there are images for the apartment, we'd like to render out an image with the source being the first image within the images array. And we'll give it a style of styles.image, which will be a height of 60, width of 60, border radius of five, border color of theme color dash gray, and border width of one. And underneath of this row, we will render out another row and we'll give it a style of available now container and that's going to have a margin top of 15 and we will justify content to be space between. Within that, we will have some text. The category is going to be C1 and the style will be a font weight of 600. And for the text, we'll just say available now. And within this, we'll render out some text which has a category of C1 and status of info and reads floor plan details. Now, outside of this row, We'd like to render a divider and give it a style of styles.divider, which is just going to have a background color of theme, color dash gray, and margin top of five. And beneath that, we'll render out another row, giving it a style of default margin vertical, followed by some text within that, which has a category of C1 and a style of layered text. It's going to read unit and layered text has a width of 21%. And then we'll have the price here, which also has layered text as the style, and it will read price. And then we'll also have the square footage. And then we'll render out the availability and give it a style of available text, which has a width of 37%. And following this row, let's render out a divider, giving it a style of the divider. And following that, we'll render out another row. And within this row, we'll display the unit number, the amount for rent, and the square footage of the apartment. We'll also display a date here. Now, in prod, you'd want this to be set by the user, or rather the property owner but for this, we'll just set it for the current date. And we'll follow that row by a divider. Now down here in this else clause, instead of rendering an empty component, let's render some text, which states that no apartments are listed. And we'll give it a style of apartment logistics title. All right, now let's go to an apartment which doesn't have any listed. So here's an example where none are listed, but we are actually showing that there are options that we can choose from. So let's add some code 
into our project here, which will detect if there are no apartments listed or, or only certain types of apartments are listed. For example, all our studios, then we would only render out this studio option instead of the one bedroom, two bedroom, and three plus bedrooms. So let's get started on adding that. So to start off, we need to create some new variables. We'll have contains studio, contains one bed, contains two bed, and contains three plus. And those are gonna be equal to false. And now outside of our component, let's create a function called remove unnecessary buttons. It will take in an array of objects which have the title, which have a property of title and an on press event. And it'll take in a title, which will be either studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, or three plus bedrooms. And within this function, we just want to get rid of the passed in title. So we'll say array.splice, and then we will find the index where the title is equal to the passed in title. And then we'll follow that by a one. Now beneath these variables, let's create an if statement stating that if there are apartments in the property, we'd like to loop through all of those apartments and if the bedrooms of the current apartment is equal to zero, then that means that it's a studio. So contains studio equals true. If the bedrooms is one, that means it contains a one bed, so set that to true. If it's equal to two, then contains two bed is equal to true. And if it's greater than or equal to three, then contains three plus is true. And then outside of that for loop, if it doesn't contain a studio, then we need to remove the unnecessary buttons, which is going to be the studio button. And if it doesn't contain a one bed, remove that one bedroom. If it doesn't contain a two bed, we'll remove the two bedrooms. And if it doesn't contain three plus, then we'll remove the three plus bedrooms. So currently there are no apartments listed, but we can still go through the options on the tab bar. So we don't want that. So let's just move this tab bar one line below so that it fits within this conditional logic. So first we need to wrap the current apartments mapping into a fragment and then into some brackets and then we'll move the tab bar into this. So let's save that. And now you can see that no tab bar is going to be shown for when no apartments are listed. So let's go back and go to an option where it doesn't have everything like this. And we can see that really there are only one bedrooms and studios. And we can filter for those. Or if we go to all, we can see all of the different apartments. Now let's go to one where it does have all. I think this one does, so yeah. It has studios, a one bedroom, a two bedroom, and a three plus bedroom. So this section is done. I hope that you guys enjoyed and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.